to my mom, they recognized her as the most inspirational student. She was totally surprised, and as she received her award, she began to cry, and all eight of us began to cry. And soon the people in the audience began to cry, recognizing the achievements that she had. It was bittersweet because we knew how hard she had to work to get there. She had dropped out of school in the 10th grade, got married, had six children, remarried, and had two more. 
When she decided to go back, she had to get her GED and enrolled in the nursing program at Fresno City College. At that time, community colleges were free, and I think we need to go back that way. Yeah. Even now, reciting this story to you, I get emotional. You see, I was that 19-year-old, and it was my mom who was the graduate they recognized. So although my story may be a bit different from yours, all of us have a story of how we got here. Always stay true to yourself. Never forget where you came from because it made you who you are today. So on behalf of the district, which is all four colleges, I want to congratulate you, class of 2023.
and welfare, graduated into a family-sustaining job that transformed our lives. I went from being broke to leading as a manager in a billion-dollar industry with Ford Motor Company. I later returned to Oakland and raised that same daughter I had at Hampton University, who later received a full ride to Harvard University. Thank God. And finished through the trauma of losing her brother when our son Brandon was murdered at the age of 20 during her sophomore year of college. It took a village, just like you have behind you. It took much prayer. It took faith in action. And it took a tenacity to hold on, not give up, and keep showing up, not throwing in the towel. And so I grew from those character building moments and life lessons, and I want to share just one with you today, and I call it the power of showing up. It's that power, you know, when you don't feel like getting up the face today, rolling out of bed, going to work or school, taking on that task, eating, addressing the issues head on, doing not a daggone thing. But when you do pull it together, when you do show up, something shifts inside of you, around you, and for you. You realize you're not alone and there's this village rallied around you. You realize life is worth living and fighting for, that you needed to show up there, that you needed to hear that word, that you needed to speak that truth, to forgive, to receive, to release, to connect with that person, to stay engaged with that community of support, to complete the assignment, to learn that tough life lesson, to give of yourself for the sake of also serving the needs of others when you feel like you had nothing left to give, when you weren't okay, but you still showed up. Even when you had to sit in the back of the room, you were there. You realized you were right where you belonged on your worst day for the purpose of picking up the pieces, prevailing in your own goals, or your presence being a rope of hope to unlock destiny, faith, and fulfillment for someone else or something greater than yourself, even while struggling through your own issues. You showed up, you rose up, and you lifted others up. Or as I reflect, it was like me working on statewide violence prevention legislation and bill packages when I worked for Senator Nancy Skinner when she was in the state assembly. In the midst of grieving the loss of our own son who was taken by one bullet, bullet I helped pass her bullet bill, AB 48, and I volunteered in the maximum security area of the Alameda County Juvenile Detention with their rights of passion program to support pouring into the life of someone else's son. That's the power of showing up. It requires that Oakland grit that you got, that strength in spite of challenges, those life circumstances, and regardless of what people say, think about, or spread about you, it cuts through the emotional turmoil. It cuts through the crippling complacency, the confidence crumbling situations, the uncontrollable circumstances are being held hostage by the deep weight of grief to rise up, to show up, to carry on, to overcome, and prayerfully triumph. That is the power of showing up that you may have stood in to get here today. And I want to encourage you to keep rising up in your battle stance, to overcome the experiences that you're faced with so that you can experience more of the victory that you are standing in today. Don't take this moment lightly. We don't. It costs you something to get here. And we honor, we recognize, and we celebrate you. But know that it's not over because the power of showing up will continue to cause you to meet every moment of hardship, despair, seemingly defeat, and illogical opportunity that will produce miraculous results in your life as it did in my own. That is the victory that I'm calling you to rise up in today. So as I close, I see that you're entering a new beginning with more life lessons to learn and build on, and it will require you to walk out the power of showing up. I wanna encourage you to stay connected with this community, the village of love behind you and around you, Support one another today and those who are supporting you from afar, but boldly walk out how you write and creatively express your chapter in the next season of your life. Your stories are unfolding with courage to continue to rise up. And so receive the shift taking place in your life now as you stand at your door of destiny. We are watching with anticipation. We are cheering with great celebration, and we are here to champion you on to the next season of your life. So y'all keep showing up, Eagles. Keep rising, eagles. Keep lifting up, eagles. Keep soaring, eagles, and be a conduit of inspiration for others to go. Congratulations, class of 2023. Go for it. We're watching you rise.
council member Reed. That's some powerful Reed words right there. One more round of applause for that, right there. That's transforming grief into spiritual activism, moving from the heart, and that's what y'all are doing here today. Y'all are setting the models for the next generation, for your family, for our whole communities. So someone who really embodies this in the praxis of Lady College is Omolola Aolobe, who is our student leader, our president of the Associated Students of Lady College, and they're here to present this year's Lady College Valedictorian. Let's give them a round of applause. Good morning, Interim Chancellor, Peralta Community College District, Dr. Janet Jackson, President, Lady College, Dr. Rudy Besikoff. Members of the President's Cabinet, Lady College. Teaching and non-teaching staff members of Lady College. My fellow students, parents and guests. Eaglets were hushed two years ago and were cared for in the next by Mother Eagle, Lady College. Now it is time for us to spread our wings and soar beyond the stars. It has been an honor for me to serve as the president of the Associated Students of our grade school, Lady College. Allow me to introduce the class of 2023 valedictorian, Kenneth Hell Z. Lester, with a perfect 4.0 GPA. Kenneth has excelled as a college student, completing an associate in arts degree for transfer in journalism and a certificate of achievement in transfer studies, IGETC. In the fall, he will continue his education at the University of California, Berkeley, pursuing a degree in media studies with a minor in journalism. Having honed his skills as at contributing to cause a state student paper, the Daily Californian. Please join me in welcoming Kenneth Z. Lester, this year's Lady College Valedictorian, to the podium. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad I didn't have to directly follow Travis' speech. <laughs> That would have been intense. I'm just going to try not to shiver through this because I'm freezing cold. Okay. If you would have told me a couple years ago when I started at Laney College that I would be standing up here talking to you all now, I would have told you you were totally out of your minds. I never saw myself as a valedictorian. I never even really saw myself as a particularly good student. I graduated 237th out of my high school class of 318. I barely made C's. I, I didn't do very well in school. Um, academic success always seemed to me to be a realm reserved for a different type of person than I saw myself as. Valedictorians got up early and had tutors and read the works of great philosophers in their free time. Instead, I stay up late and play Nintendo for five hours straight and curse like a sailor and still do. Sorry, Grandma. Um, I think one of the most profound things I learned while I was here at Laney College is that that's a myth. There is no such thing as a valedictorian type. Just as there's no such thing as an athlete type or an astronaut type or an activist type. There is only who you are and what you want to be. And those two things can exist simultaneously without one affecting the other whatsoever. You can do whatever you want in your life without sacrificing an ounce of what you are already. This doesn't mean you won't change, that you won't grow. You will, and that's a good thing. Over the past few years, the vast majority of my growth I owe to some wonderful people who pushed me and supported me and encouraged me. The first being Eleni Gastis, who is sitting right over there. Uh, she's the head of the journalism department here at Laney College and the advisor to our news publication, The Citizen, and she's absolutely the single most dedicated teacher I've ever met in my entire life. She poured her soul into me, she opened doors, made sure that I was always fed, and made sure I knew I was good enough. If you ever feel like you need to come take another class here at Laney, take it with her. You'll come out a better person for it. Uh, I also want to thank Shiloh Johnston, who is the editor-in-chief at The Citizen. He made my life as managing editor very, very easy. 
Um, he's an intensely hard worker, a great friend, and working alongside him created a high standard that made me a better writer and editor in person. Uh, the only reservation I had in accepting that a spot as valedictorian is because I didn't think I deserved it as much as he does. I'd also like to thank the district administration for always supplying us with a constant and endless amount of content to write about. If you've read much of our work at The Citizen, you know they probably didn't have much of a say in putting me up on the stage here today. Um, don't worry, that's all I'm going to say, but if you guys can get us those public records as soon as possible, that would be great. Uh, my grandmommy sitting in the stands out there, she flew all the way from Florida here. That type of love is standard from her. I appreciate you and love you. Uh, to the rest of my family and friends, there's too many of you to name that put me up here. Um, whatever you did in whatever form, I appreciate it and noticed it. And finally, my girlfriend, Camille, who's sitting right next to my grandma. To say she supported me throughout this entire re-entry into the academic world, it, it really doesn't do what she's done for me justice. There's not any words to describe how much she supported me, other than to say that without her, there's no chance I'm standing here in front of you today. Uh, you're truly the best. I appreciate you, and I love you unconditionally. But I'm not the only one here today. I almost feel embarrassed that I'm taking so much time out of what is really all of your day as well. Um, congratulations, sincerely, to all of you. There will be people that look at what we've all done and, and say under their breath or in their mind that it's just community college. But we all know, I know and you know, that it is hard to get where you're sitting. Earning a degree from anywhere takes focus and persistence and sacrifice. And you did it. You earned it. I'm thankful to be among you and excited that we will always have this in common, no matter where our lives take us next. Some of you will be continuing your education at another institution, some of you will be entering a new job field with your newly acquired skills, and some of you will be taking a break, and I don't blame you. That sounds really nice. But wherever we go, we'll always have this together. In the fall, I'll be transferring to the University of California. I'll be a Golden Bear. But I'll always be, along with the rest of you, Eleni Eagle. Thank you, guys. Kenneth, let's give them a round of applause. Yes to community college. This is college for the people. Always be proud that you come from college of the people. It is no matter where you go, you come back. Um, so I am so excited now to welcome to the podium Omar Esteban Ramos, the Gateway to College Resource Specialist, who will introduce this year's Gateway to College Valedictorian. Give him a round of applause. Hi everyone, before I start, I want to shout out one, not only the class of 2023 Gateway to College graduates, for those of you who don't know, there's actually a high school class here at Laney Co uh, High School program at Laney College who are taking the same classes as all the graduates here. So I just want to give them a huge shout out for taking the same classes, the same programs, the same peers of joy for them completing their high school graduation requirements. I'm here to introduce the valedictorian of Gave It a College, but I also want to give a shout out to Zach Ariola, who's the salutorian as well. Both of these two individuals have busted their butts in this past year to get to where they are today. Both of them are pursuing higher education. And so I just want to give everyone a huge shout out uh, before I introduce uh, the Valley Victorian of Gateway to College. Today, I have the honor of introducing the Valley Victorian, Vincent Isaiah Poole, uh, who was born and raised in Berkeley and then raised in Oakland, California. With a passion and creativity, he went to Oakland High, uh, Oakland School for the Arts and transitioned into San Francisco Ballet School. After taking the leap of faith to pursue his dreams, coinciding with his journey, Isaiah decided to join the Gateway to College program and enrolled in courses at Laney. A year later, he uh, obtained a high, a high school academic honor status while following a rigorous training to become the best ballet uh, dancer he could to challenge himself. Isaiah looks forward to attending Fordham University in the fall and getting his BFA in dance through the Alvin A. Dance School in New York City. I want to introduce the Gary to College 2023 Ballet Victorian, Isaiah Poole. Good 
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, um, before I begin, I'd like to first thank my family for being here and for always being my greatest supporters since forever. And, <laughs> and I would not be here without my the support of my mother specifically. She's always been there, this, um, especially this year. It's been more difficult than other years, but yes. Congratulations, we did it. Yes. I am beyond honored to be here speaking on behalf of my graduating class. I am so proud of every single person graduating today, but especially my Gateway family. I honestly cannot believe we are actually and officially done with high school. I don't know about you all, but the last four years have felt like an eternity for me, probably because of the pandemic that made everything super stretched out. I remember asking myself, when is this going to end? counting down the days until it, until I was done. And now, it truly does not feel real. My high school experience, like many 2023 graduates, has been very different than what I expected. It's been rough. Everyone here has definitely had their moments. I know I've had mine, where I did not know how I was going to pull through. But we all did. Everyone who is graduating today, whether it be from high school like me or college, deserves the utmost praise because it wasn't easy. But I am forever grateful for what Gateway College and Laney College have done for me at a time where I was truly lost. Starting at Laney was the best thing for me. After being in a, in a multitude of different high school programs and learning situations, I can say that things only started to click once I transferred here a few years ago. Before my time at Laney, I had started high school at Oakland School of the Arts studying dance. I had been there since the start of middle school, so I felt very comfortable and had good friends. I liked it, but I knew my time was going to be coming to an end after getting into my dream ballet school on a full scholarship. Part of me was sad I would no longer get the traditional high school experience, but ballet was my top priority. San Francisco Ballet, also known as SFB, is a pre-professional ballet school for those who knew ballet was what they wanted to do with their lives. Classes, classes would normally start around 9 a.m. and end around 3, basically replacing my academic schooling. It was, time, it was time for me to start online school. Mind you, this was before everyone else kind of jumped on the bandwagon a few years later, so I felt very cool and quirky at the time. I started with online classes, and I also took classes at Berkeley City College, then ended up at Oakland Unified School District's Independent Study. Things were great. I was excelling at SFB, ready to go to American Ballet Theater's summer intensive in New York and another scholarship, but things started to turn, started to hit the wall after the pandemic. I could no longer go to New York and do all the things dance related or put on hold. That year of isolation was detrimental to my mental health, as it was for a lot of people. I was at my lowest dealing with things every 16 year old does. I didn't have any self-confidence at the time and that affected my dancing tremendously. When I returned back to the studio, I felt like something was missing. I had been dancing since the fourth grade. It was always been my dream and what I aspired to do for my career. But suddenly after this long break, I was no, it was no longer fun. I could only focus on the stressful parts of doing ballet. Will I be good enough to make it into a professional company? Am I even good enough to make it to the final level? All of these questions and insecurities would fill my mind as soon as I stepped into the studio. I was 17 and very behind strength boys compared to the other boys in my class. Every day felt like a reminder of how behind I was and how bad of a dancer I was. I, it also didn't help that I didn't really feel like a sense of community there. It felt like I had to deal with all of this stuff on my own. What was once a place where I could detach from the stress of life became the biggest stressor, so I quit. Leaving SFB was one of the hardest decisions of my life. But I knew at the time it was the right one. I needed a break from ballet. 
Around this time, I started my classes at Laney through the Gateway College program. After the loss of my dream, I fell into a depression that I had not experienced before, and I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, and it stayed that way for a while. I've always been the type of person that thrived off the plan, and since the ripe age of 12, the plan was set in stone. So when that plan fell through and I realized I no longer wanted to be a ballet dancer, let's just say I was a wreck. But things started to turn around once I got into the gateway, once I got used to the gateway and leaning community. I was actually able to make friends that made me excited to go to school. A community of friends and administrators who were there for me was something I didn't um, have since I left Oakland School of the Arts a few years ago. And it's something I miss dearly. The community at Laney was one thing I didn't expect to see when I first arrived, but continues to be one of my favorite things about this school. I've met some of the most interesting people while being here. There's such a wide range of different perspectives and lives behind every student and teacher at this school. Everyone who goes to um, Laney goes for their own unique reasons. Every professor, professor I've had, I've thoroughly enjoyed and have gotten something useful out of their class. I got the chance to try photography last semester after wanting to be for a while, and I loved it. It quickly became one of my favorite things to do after getting my own personal camera. What I love about Lane is that there are so many opportunities to indulge in something you love, whether it be photography or ceramics or carpentry. There is truly something for everyone here. After a while, Gateway felt like any normal high school in its own unique way. There were silly field trips like any normal high school, hangout areas outside the classrooms, I'm going to specifically miss hanging out on the slab by the pond after anthropology with my dear friends Ade, Sunny, and Z. I'm going to miss hanging out in the gender neutral bathroom with Brian and Arwen to pass the time. Things like that have made the experience of being at Laney one I will genuinely cherish forever. Looking back, I always yearned for that traditional high school experience that I couldn't have because of my situation with dance. I thought that I would never get it. And yes, my time at Laney still isn't the most typical experience of a high schooler, but I can confidently say that from the bottom of my heart that it's one that means so much to me. My time at Laney helped me learn, helped me grow, helped me discover what my next steps were for me. It gave me space to reflect and gave me, it made me realize that I would like to return to dance, but on my own terms. I'm excited to say I will be attending Fordham University in New York City. a full uh, merit scholarship, which is a little nice. <laughs> while being a student at the Alvin Ailey Dance School. Yeah! After my break, I concluded that I still loved dance, but focusing on only ballet was no longer for me. Each and every student here has their own unique story for how their journey to Laney started. Each one of us had our own personal issues we were struggling with while also juggling academic classes, and each one of us needed out out the other end, like the powerhouses we are. And now we can go off and see what else our lives have in store for us. It'll be amazing. Congratulations, graduates. Um, and also shout out to Gateway to College. Just give Gateway to College a round of applause. So speaking of, it is so beautiful that this year our keynote speaker runs our Gateway to College program. I'm really honored to introduce Dr. Will Achoa. Dr. Will Ramos Achoa is a Bay Area native, particularly born in San Francisco, raised all around the Bay, and also in Sinaloa, Mexico. He never attended high school, but ended up completing his GED at 18 years old. He then began attending Laney College and transferred to Cal State East Bay. Where's the Cal State East Bay folks? I'm here. Hey! All right. Uh, where he received his Bachelor's of Arts in Sociology. Dr. Will then ended up continuing his education in graduate school where he completed a Master's of Arts in Education doctorate with an emphasis in community college leadership at Mills College, not Northeastern. Okay. Uh, Dr. Will is a big anime enthusiast and is a true advocate for his students as the director of Gateway to College here at Laney College. 
Dr. Will previously received the Laney College Deeds Medallion for Business Student Ambassador of the Year Award, Service of Excellence Award while participating as both an Associated Student of Laney College Senator, and later on as their treasurer. He was a graduate fellow for the American Association of Hispanics of Higher Education, where he presented on his doctoral research on Gang of Brothers, Hermanidad and Brotherhood focused on supporting and validating the identities of Latino and, and males of color during their tenure working as a resource specialist for the Gateway to College at Contra Costa College. Dr. Will is an unapologetic Chicano eh, who loves his community and who is proud of growing up mostly in real East Oakland. All right, let's give Dr. Will a round of applause. All right, everybody. Welcome, Lady College Title 2023. Hype yourself up real quick. You guys didn't do all this for nothing. Please keep the energy up. I hope that I hope that I do you justice. I promise I won't take too long. I know you guys are ready to celebrate with your families and your friends and people around you. I want to give a shout out to Gateway College, particularly this is our first time participating in this ceremony, and I hope that we can continue to diversify the experience of our students because there's a lot of students with different struggles, different life choices, but you guys are all here for the same reason, because you guys have succeeded, right? And I'm really excited to see where y'all go next, right? So, now that I said that, give it up for yourselves, right? Uh, give a shout out to your families behind you, right? They're all waiting for you, right? The day is finally here. After two plus years of dedication, you have earned the title of a college graduate. Not only do you bestow pride upon yourselves as individuals, but you also bring pride to the circles you walk in. Your families and friends that listen to your stories, frustration, exhaustion, growth, and triumph, you bring pride to your future colleagues who will be blessed enough to work alongside you and witness you utilize your creativity and intelligence to make our society better. 10 years ago, I was sitting exactly where you are now, eager to do the walk of pride, receive my degree, or at least the replica, until the real thing gets delivered to my home. I'm sorry, you guys are not getting the real one right now. <laughs> and look to my future that I hope will be exciting, successful, and noteworthy. But before that glorious day, I had struggles and a story just like all of you. You are just like me, the same hood Latino dude that grew up in real East Oakland, you know what I'm saying? Just gotta say that real quick. And other parts of the Bay Area, the same one who at 16 years old, regardless if I was an American citizen, ironically, I picked tomatoes and worked as a janitor at a tomato factory in Sinaloa, Mexico when I was out there for four years, which is why I never went to high school. Working until 3 a.m., going back to it at 7.30 a.m., almost every day instead of going to high school. The same one who came back to the U.S. where I earned my GED at 18 years old, not because I wanted to, because out of love for me, my mother kicked me out of Mexico because she feared my fate if I stayed. Instead, I survived, came back, and attended Laney College, where I worked as a student ambassador in the A building, by the flagpole on the right side, A101, just in case you forget. All right? Shout out to the Welcome Center. Helping new students apply, sort out financial aid, add classes, redu I learned customer service, I learned how to help students there. I had a second job off campus that was more hectic and cutthroat, where at times, I felt that I was just an employee number. I worked the graveyard shift at FedEx, loading packages on the FedEx planes. I know some of y'all work there right now, I, I feel you. And then becoming a delivery driver, just to pay my rent and take care of myself. I'm sure many of you relate to the stresses of working while schooling. In between attending classes, working, and studying, I had no time to unwind and allow my brain some much needed rest. I overextended myself. I was running out, I was running on about three to four hours of sleep a night. 
eventually the exhaustion caught up to me and I ended up having, let's call it, an episode in front of my supervisor who was the dean back in the day at the welcome center, funny enough. I just could not handle the, the pressure of a super packed schedule of trying to balance everything. I kept persisting through the struggle until I graduated with my first degree. That upcoming month, I began my first classified position job here at Laney. Actually, as a staff assistant to the same program that I'm now the director for. Now, I have the honor to serve my students from the same community I grew up in. Now I have the responsibility, not just the honor, to advocate, guide, mentor, and support my program and the students to the best of my ability and unapologetically. Serving the same community that I come from is an honor and privilege. Although the work is hard and stressful at times, I don't regret any minute of it. Because now I get to see my students graduate with their high school diploma in this very same field. So shout out to Gateway to College real quick. Although I went through some tough times while at Laney, I learned to grow in a community that nurtured my confidence so much that I transferred to CSU East Bay and received my bachelor's degree in sociology. I'm not the exception. I'm not the statistic. I'm not just within the 1% of Latinos or Chicanos who receive a doctorate in this country. I'm a human being just like each and every one of you. In preparation for this speech, I thought about being funny, serious, rambunctious, or even trying my best to get at least one of our graduates to squeeze out a crocodile tear. I realized that I was overthinking it, that all I had to do is what I always do, be my authentic self. And, sh Thank you. and share my story and message that all the sacrifices, whether big or small, have benefited you and your loved ones. And that the path to having the confidence to pursue your dreams and goals begin with loving yourself. And I hope you continue to do so in the next chapters of your life. Continue to grow in ways that you never knew possible. Master your crafts. Attain knowledge that opens your eyes about the world you live in. Keep building your passion and build your life's framework around it. Scaffold your goals like it is your life building blocks. Because when you have a strong foundation, no one can stop you regardless of what comes to you. I'm almost done. Remember to give yourself grace and patience to ease the journey because it can be difficult in the long run. You are here today in one form or another. You have overcome challenges, some personal, some unique, and some challenges were beyond your control. But you jumped these hurdles because you wanted to change your lives for the better and the lives of those you care about. Of course, this journey isn't over. There will be doubts of imposter syndrome and uncertainty. Despite the mental battles, I want to let you know that this journey, the one that we're all in, is worth the risk and challenges because there comes a point where all the sacrifices you make, late night studying, calling in babysitting favors so you can attend your class with the peace of mind that your kids are safe, cutting out toxic people that you were once close with, late nights of Googling complex ideas, concepts, formulas, theories, conceptual frameworks, methodologies, etc. Countless hours of reading in order to meet your obligated deadlines. The day you break down in tears because you can't seem to find the solution to your problems. And then you just gotta listen to some of your music. And if I, who went from spending my teenage years working in a factory, picking tomatoes, picking up nasty tomatoes from this factory and cleaning these machines with toxic materials, you can obtain whatever you want. You can obtain a GED, you can get a bachelor's, you can get a master's, you can get a doctorate if you want. And I did all that before I was 30. And then, then I don't see why all of us can't get there and maximize what life has to offer us. Let us continue to strive and be the best version of our authentic selves. Let us not be the exception, but let us be the leaders in our community to educate our future generations 
and those we hold dear to us. Let us share our wisdom with those that need guidance. We are all in this together, and today you all deserve to be congratulated because you strived, remained focused, worked hard, and went the distance. Now it has led you to begin the next chapter of your journey. Again, let us not be the exception. We should be the norm for our community. You guys are the norm. Your family is looking at you right now. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2023. Class of 2023. It is truly great to be gathering for our first in-person commencement ceremony since 2019. Not a, yeah, okay, come on. And not just for the ceremony, but the celebration afterwards, right? There you go. Graduates, let me say this to you. You look absolutely impressive today. And we are all so proud of you. I'd like to give you two closing remarks that are charges that I ask you to take forward as proud Laney College graduates. First, stay in touch with us and let us know how you're doing. Because your successes, even after today, we all will always share with you. Also, in considering what you can give to the college after today, if, whether it's resources such as your time, or even a donation for a scholarship to the Peralta Colleges Foundation. Please stay connected with us in a way that keeps Laney College alive for you. Secondly, pay your education forward as a mentor to the Laney College graduates of tomorrow. Whether it's a former Laney classmate, and you know what, I, I know they sometimes say stay out of your phones. I'm actually going to tell you to go into your phones right now, believe it or not. Or, yeah, you bet. <laughs> Find somebody in there. Maybe it's a former classmate you had here at Laney. Maybe it's something, someone coming up at, through OUSD or, or another high school right now. Maybe it's a fellow community member who said, yeah, college, I'm thinking about it. Take them under your wing. Be a mentor to them. If you do this, it will shape your life in a way that transcends all experiences. And I promise you, it will bring a richness unlike any other. This is a day to celebrate and appreciate one of the truly great milestones in the journey of life. You know, as an undergraduate student, I was often told how my studies were practice for real life. But that's just not true with all of you. And I, I want to do one last thing just to show that that's true. Because so many of you have done so much more to bring greatness to the degree that you earn today. And your life experiences also bring greatness to our college. If you are first in your family to attend college, please stand up. And you can stay standing. If, if I say something to fly you, you this way. If English is not your first language, please stand up. That's right. Congratulations. If you are a veteran who has served our country, thank you for your service and please stand. If you are, and we heard single parents, but if you are a parent, please stand up. Or a single parent. If, as a college student, you worked part-time while doing your studies, go ahead, stand up. How about full-time? Yeah, that's right. And then on campus, beyond your classes, if you were a member of the student government, our newspaper, if you were part of restoring our communities, Umoja, Puente, Latinx community, APEC, come on, stand up, it's okay. BSU, ASLC, yeah. 
ELPS, Powerworks. Next up, Gateway, a student athlete, part of the Lavender Project, part of one of our student, great student clubs like Evolved Minds, or any other student group. Congratulations. And then finally, if you put in more hours for homework that you ever have in your life, stand up. And if you are proud today to be a Lincoln College graduate, stand up. City of Oakland, Chancellor Jackson, I present to you so proudly the class of 2023. Thank you.